Well, good morning, good afternoon, or whatever it is, everybody. Uh, nice to see you all again and to know that you're with me. This time, we're going to actually paint uh, Uluru uh, because I want you to be able to use the wet in wet technique we were practicing last week so assiduously to put in these particular places on the uh, on the mountain. There are some sharp edges, that's a sharp edge there, and there's a, another sharp, definitely sharp edge down there with the light is catching. So not all of the edges are going to be wet and wet, but this is the reason we were practicing wet and wet last week. Okay, so I'm going to start by laying in the sky. Um, so uh, nice dollar per ultramarine. Ultramarine blue in our sky. I've made it fairly wet. Um, so I'm just putting in the sky. I forgot my pencil, so I haven't got a drawing. So I'm attempting to do this um, without actually doing any drawing. It would be rather interesting. Uh, don't go back over the wash. I think I keep telling you that. Once you you set it up, I'm going to add a bit more water to the mix now and start to pay attention to the shape of the jolly old mountain because it comes down here, doesn't it? Uh, along there like that. So that's that side. And then when we come over here, there's a hump, which continues on down and then there's another um, period of going on down there and then we come on down here something like that it's not madly accurate but it'll do hi hi nice to see you that's okay right so that's that's the sky and leave it at that don't go back mucking about with it and, and hoping to change it and make it better for one thing, it's not wildly important in the picture. Um, uh, and for another, as as we know, if you go back and mess with a wash, what you end up with is a disaster instead of a mild indiscretion. Now, uh, the next thing I want to do is to put in these darker areas, uh, not on this part of the rock itself. This I'm going to leave to paint in a little while. But these darker areas here do need um, me to find the colour. Uh, this is a problem that you find constantly in Cheshire because of the red Cheshire sandstone. It's a difficult colour to, to mix. Um, and I don't think I've ever got it entirely right. So I'm going to try this time to use... Um, some alizarin crimson and some brown uh, burnt sienna. Try it out on a piece of paper. Well, that's not bad actually. It's not. Um, it's not neat uh, alizarin, um, and it's not neat crush. Uh, burnt sienna, but a mix of the two does give you quite a nice a nice colour. Now that, that will do fine for the basic rock itself. So if I make a bit more, because I'm manifestly going to use a lot of this. Now remember, when you mix a colour, it isn't the colour that's in the well that will go on your paper, it's the colour that's up here, uh, where it's thinner. That's the colour that you will see actually on your paper. Now, if I take some of that and add, what shall I add? What shall I add? Um, 
shall I add? I think I will add a bit of ultramarine to see what it does. Ooh, that's a nice colour. It's made quite a nice... I think that will go fine. So I'll go with that for this dark side of the mountain. I might want to add a bit of other darks to it, but I think this, this will do fine. Right, now we need it to actually define the edge here. So there's a bit there. And a bit here. Now, while I've been mixing, that has um, that has dried beautifully. So Now, when I come down here, I want to leave a suggestion of the bushes. And then this, that bit can cross there like that. So. Now, there are streaks in there. So while it's still dark, wet, I'm going to put in some bits of ultramarine to suggest the streaks of take some take that paint off. While it's wet, I'm going to just use it. To move it across a bit, soften those lines. just to soften the lines a bit. Right, and if we go over here, we've got the same thing, because I've run out of paint, haven't I? Um, I don't think that's a problem. I think by needing to mix it again, I'm going to get a slightly different color anyway. So, um, and that all adds to the fun. Clicking in favor of fun. If you are working alongside me, I suggest you don't, because I'm going fairly fast. I suggest what you do is take in what I'm saying, try and remember it, so that when you come to do it yourself, um, you, you'll have uh, you'll have a better idea of um, of what what's happening. Right, I'm going to take the water off the brush pick up a bit of my paler colour because back here uh, the mountain is paler so I'll just put in a bit of the mountain there which is paler and then yes that's fairly well what it's like and then I'll pick, take the water off the brush again, pick up my dark colour. I've got a mountain coming in like that. That needs to be darker. So I'll mix a bit more paint. Long brown, and you can. And a touch of. There we are, that's better. Right, because this is quite dark here. And that cuts into here, giving me the shape of the mountain there. And then there's another one that comes across there like that. In the shadow. So this is all um, in shadow here. That isn't quite dark enough, but it will do. I want to suggest some dark on this here. So I'm going to just put a little bit of that dark on top of the, uh, the area. 
there. Right. I'll pick up a little bit more blue in there. I can put in some streaks in here. And perhaps darken this one a little bit. I'm leaving the people out, by the way. Um, I don't want to put people in. I'm more interested in getting the mountain right, if at all possible. Now, while this is still wet here, I'm going to pick up some neat Prussian blue, uh, ultramarine. Just put it in there. Because this mountain here is further back than further back than the one in front of it. That's a really brilliant remark to me. <laughs> this is what this is the sort of thing that happens when you're trying to draw and paint at the same time. Right. Okay. Um now I need to think about the mountain itself. What I'm going to do is uh, get another brush. I'm getting a big um, flat brush. I'm going to just wet the mountain as I go along. I think that's dry. It's dry to me anyway. Right? It's bleeding a little bit, but uh, one is allowed. Uh, it's, it's fairly necessary to. Uh, wet it because you don't want it to dry out too fast and uh, I was watching Hazel yesterday on the video she said something which I hadn't quite uh, grasped which was if the rougher your paper the wetter it stays and this is fairly rough paper so if you're, if you're on a very smooth paper it dries very quickly right so I now pick up that lovely colour that I made and introduce it to my um, mountain. See, it's running down beautifully, isn't it? It really is. But while it's wet like this, you can move it around. It's not. But I'm trying not to go back where I have previously put a brush stroke trying to keep it as even as possible. And there's trees down the bottom here, which we can attend to. Right, now that's fairly, fairly wet. I don't mind that that's bleeding a little bit because that side of the mountain is in a slight shadow. So what do I do about that? Well, I've got my ultramarine. And I want that to shadow, so I'm going to add a lot of brown to my colour. In fact, I might even just use the brown. Now, remember, there's a lot of water on that paper. And there's a lot of water in this brush. So I'm going to take the water out of the brush by rolling it on a rag. And pick up my brown that I've mixed and start to put it in around here. Now I'm, I'm a bit previous actually. This, this part's all right down here. This, this isn't going to hurt, but I've lost the, the subtle curve there, so I've come in too soon. Come on, Pete. I think I could go darker, so making it a bit thicker, 
will help. So I'm just using neat um, burnt sienna here to see if I can do a better job. Mm. I'm still hurrying too fast. Still haven't got that quite the way I like it. Um, well, that's life. Just put up with it. Right, now, there are some striations in here with a slightly stronger colour. So, um, if I take a bit of the really dark colour that I have and mix it in with my the burnt sienna, I'll get a you see it's it's moving. It's not moving fast though. It is, it is moving, but it's not moving fast. I think it's um, and down here, it is a bit darker. I might just find a rag. See if I can lift this. Right. Now, this has been drying out quite nicely. There's a collection of water at the bottom here, which I'm just picking up. I think this is probably ready. Now, you're going to go in here with a really dark color. So you have to be um, accurate with your color and make it thick enough. So, I'm putting a lot of paint in there. I'm not even cleaning my brush. I'm going straight to the, the brown, and picking up a lot of the brown there. And then we added a bit of ultramarine. And if I try it out on here, that's a fairly dark colour. I think that is probably going to do the job. Um, try it out on somewhere that doesn't matter too, too much, like here. I think that's, that's moving nicely. Isn't it? Right, okay. So then we go further up here. Parts of that is dry, but it's not too serious. Great patch here. Right now, be brave little piglet. This is it. 
here. That's quite a quite a firm edge there. Comes down here. A splodge here. Here, yeah, just take that out. Here. Right. Now then, if I clean the brush, this is actually part of a. Shape that goes up there. All I've done is to pull the existing paint, and this is another one that does that. So I've just taken the paint and pulled it up into the drier paint surface. That one. And then down here. It's run a bit too much just there. So what I'm going to do is blot it. There. And I'm going to add a bit more blue to the mix and drop it in here. Because this is really dark in here. Paint this wretched mountain forever, it's gorgeous. That's spread a bit. Let's take it back. That's just some neat blue gray in to really, really push the dark. And down there, and then hmm. right, how, how's time, Rachel? Um, we've got plenty of time, I think. It doesn't it hasn't told me yet. Right. Okay. Now, I'm not happy with this. This isn't dark enough. I'm going to go back in. It's, st it's still wet, so it's okay. I can, I can go back in. I think it's still wet. Yes, it's still wet up there, too. So I'm going to go back in. This is just the brown. I'm just taking it down to make it darker because it uh, barely shows up against that. Now, about ten minutes. Right, okay. Now, that's quite a hard edge there and I don't want that far, so I clean my brush, take all the water out of it and just run a dry brush over that edge. And I can put a few of the, the dark. No, I can't. It's too wet. Right. What am I going to do about the trees? Might as well get on to the trees. I'm using um, yeah, sorry, sorry. raw sienna. And I'm going to add ultramarine to the raw sienna. Which gives me a sort of grey-green colour. And I can push those trees in there. Remember that they are actually trees. This, this mountain is huge. So what looks like a pile of little things is actually 
quite a collection of big trees. And the colour is really good against the, the colours of the, um, uh, the mountain. And then over here they get a bit darker, so if I add a touch more ultramarine, I use ultramarine because that's the colour that I've got in the picture. And if you mix your colours using the uh, colours that you've already got in your picture, you'll find the colours tie together better. Right, now I can use that dark to just put in some characteristic darks in the trees, taking care to put them on the same side as the shadow on the mountain. Elementary, but uh, <coughs> something you sometimes forget to do, especially if you're painting in a hurry. You're trying to get something down. Now, uh, if I... paint across the bottom there. Uh, if I take some of that uh, raw sienna. I take some of the raw sienna and add it to that. I'm just, I'm just ignoring the people and the path and everything. I'm just putting in something here. I want that to go vaguely um, to the greeny colour. So I've added a little bit more. I'm making it darker near the mountain. Just added a bit more colour to it. That would help to, to push it back. So in that 20 minutes or so, I've got the basic mountain there. And I've used that wet and wet technique to get the um, uh, shadows and lumps and bumps in the mountain. It's one of those places you could paint endlessly because it um, it changes with the light so so very much as you're watching the light. It's just quite amazing how it changes from one shape to another as the light catches the lumps and bumps. It's very uh, uh, entertaining. Now, obviously I will do more to the trees and even out the shadows here a little bit um, as I work. But I've got the basic thing down now. What I can do now is uh, stand back and rest a little bit, look at it, think about it, and decide what I want to do to just put the finishing touches to the picture. Um, for instance, I think I need a shadow there to differentiate this bit from that bit. And I can do that um, that that is actually dry. But if I just wet it, just the wet beyond the area you want it to to go. I didn't say soak it, I said wet it. So and, and try not to move the paint underneath. And then if I just Drop that in a little bit and that it will start to to give me a shadow. Clean the brush and just allow it to to move. So that's giving me another dimension to the various mountains that are there. This, when it dries out a bit, needs a few more darks in it because of the striations of the mountain. But I think, as a picture of Uluru, that is working. So I'm quite, quite pleased with that, actually. Though I certainly myself what shouldn't. <laughs>